Uh, today is uh, July uh, 16th, uh, 2020. Uh, uh, text uh, scripture reading, reading from Second Kings 18, uh, verse 1 through 4. In the third year of uh, Hosea, son of Elah, king of Israel, Hezekiah, his, uh, his the son of Ahaz, the king of Judah, began to reign. He was uh, 25 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was uh, uh, Abi, the daughter of uh, Zechariah. And he did uh, what was right in the eyes of the Lord, according to all that David his father had done. He removed the, uh, the high places and uh, broke uh, the pillars and cut down the Asherah, and he broke in pieces and broke the serpent that Moses had made. For until those, those days, the people of Israel had made offering to it. It was called Nehu, Nehushtan. Uh, today, uh, the title will be uh, His Kiyas uh, Reformation. So as you know, uh, in history, church history, we uh, know uh, Reformation. Yeah. 1517. It was uh, uh, really changing history, as you know. Uh, Ruther and John Calvin and all the you know people they just uh, try to uh, uh, they just against the Catholic Church and then they are they were they were teaching at the time uh, not according to the Bible. That's why and Ruther and Calvin all those people and based on the teaching of the Bible. They just against the fight, you know. They uh, they fought with uh, against the uh, older, uh, you know, the Catholic Church. That's why Protestant uh, began afterwards. So this is history. Uh, if we look at the old history, we see uh, there are so many reformations. So that's why uh, Saint Augustine, uh, in Latin, famous uh, phrases there, Ecclesia Reformata Semper Reformanda Est. Uh, translation is that the church reformed, always is a reforming. So, so church reformed all the time and now uh, should be reformed. So the character, main character of a church is a reformation. Always should be reformed. In other words, we should go back to the Bible always. So we should mirror ourselves always when you do something and mirror yourself and then the, from the based on the word of God and whether you are right, live, uh, your living is right or wrong, you just uh, take a look like uh, mirroring yourself like that. So important. So God's people, the church should be reformed always. In church history telling us and also Bible's teaching is telling us uh, so these expressions, you know, especially this expression represents a uh, very characteristic of God's church. So what, is the, what are the characteristics of God's church? Today, uh, I, I just uh, thought about what is a real church. Many people are thinking uh, church is uh, like a building, yeah, beautiful building in the time of King of Solomon and uh, uh, David. And uh, all the time they were looking for you know, uh, outwardly uh, building. Yeah, building is a beautiful, so temple is good. But however, after coming of Jesus Christ, Jesus just uh, told us, just break all the temple. I will rebuild it. So many people thought, though, how can he, uh, will he raise it up? It took uh, so many years. Uh, so if, if you just read it from the Gospel of John, talking about, he refers to the body himself. Church is the body, the temple itself is a you know body of Christ. So many people are going to church and attending church. It's good. It's a just a building church. But uh, biblical teaching, biblical concept is that uh, church is uh, yourself. We are church. We are temple of God. First Corinthians thirty sixteen is talking about. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 is talking about. You do not know. We are the temple of God. You know, God is abiding in us. The Holy Spirit dwells, dwells in you. So you are the temple of God. We are the temple. So many people just are thinking and, uh, you know, outwardly, they're looking for a church or oh, beautiful. Yeah, that's good. That's a 
uh, church building. But however, you have to remember, uh, don't forget it, we are church, you know. So many people are saying nowadays, don't go to church, just uh, be, uh, you, are, you should be good church, you know, beautiful church yourself. How are yourself, you know? Are you really a uh, beautiful church right now? So this is a we, uh, sh- we should think about it. All right. Uh, this uh, background of uh, Nehushtan it goes to number uh, 21. 700 years ago, the time of Hezekiah, 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 the time of Hezekiah, like uh, 716 uh, to 686 before Christ. So uh, it happened like uh, almost, uh, you know, uh, like uh, 400, yeah, 1400. So it was uh, 700 years ago uh, in the times of uh, uh, Hezekiah. Right. You remember if you read uh, Numbers 21, 4 through 9, especially uh, they almost uh, getting to the, you know, the, uh, getting to the, uh, the, the land of Canaan is on the way. Forty years uh, or almost uh, had passed. So time had passed. So almost uh, they were just getting to, almost crossing, uh, almost uh, closing, and uh, nearby the yeah, Moab is almost uh, crossing the Jordan River. Uh, they went there. And then uh, still their, their attitude wasn't, you know, will not ch- change the error. Always complain about when they faced uh, with the difficulties or hunger, and they just uh, complain to God again. So this is uh, the background. Uh, 21, uh, Numbers uh, 6. Then the Lord sent, they just complain about, and uh, verse 5, yeah, and the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and there is no water, and we wrought this waterless food. Then the Lord sent fiery servants among the people, and they uh, beat uh, the people, and so that many people of Israel died. And this is the context, you know. And then just uh, they were uh, amazed, and then they just uh, prayed to God. And then God gave them a solution. So, verse 8, The Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on, set it on a pole, you know, lift it up. And everyone who is beaten, when he sees it, shall live. So, this is really uh, also quoting from the, the Gospel of John. is talking about the lifted up one. Who is that? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ also, the Son of God, will be lifted high. And uh, so many people are dying. And the only solution, the solu- this solu- solution is only Jesus Christ. If you look at the, the history of humankind, it's uh, so difficult and many people are dying because of sin. You know, the result of the, the wage of a sin is a death. According to uh, Romans 6.23, uh, uh, talking about, so the wage, the result is the death. So everyone is going to die. There are no options. There is no solution. But, but God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, only the the answer for all humanity to be saved, you know. This is the gospel. How wonderful we just, uh, you know, good news we believe in. This is beautiful. But they didn't recognize because they're living in the only Old Testament period. But after coming of Jesus Christ, already the gospel of John talked about, explained about, the lifted one is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We know the, you know, the, the answer. But they didn't know. So that's why they only worshipped the Nehushtan, which is the set it on, you know, the pole. Yeah. Just uh, lift it up, lift it up, pole. Oh, with a, made by, you know, a copper or maybe, made, you know, like that. And they just worshipped that. Because they thought, okay, if we look at it and we will be healed and there will be something incredible. They worshipped for like 700 years. This is a ridiculous thing. But if you look at in our tradition, especially today tradition, 
and then our church history, we are doing similar things still. So we should be really be careful with that. We just uh, easy to uh, criticize. Oh, this is wrong, and uh, how can he? Uh, how can today do this like that? But in if you look at closely in each church, they have a tradition. Sometimes they honor and they respect then God or maybe uh, the word of God or the truth. They are respecting tradition more than that. This is a serious problem, you know. So I think Nehushtan uh, in our days still so many people are worshiping, worshiping their monument. What what do I uh, you know what does it mean by that monument? Is a is a mem- memory uh, stuff, you know. When you do something in your uh, personal life or church history or uh, the private church, there is a or maybe someone private witnessing, you know. Uh, for instance, a long time ago we have like witnessing uh, like a worship like that, and then he's just uh, anyone who is witnessing. I be. I become Christian, and then I was so experienced like this, and God gave me so much blessing and the sharing, witnessing. But sometimes it's good. But sometimes that kind of people, person is talking about monumental, you know, only just boasting himself or just a story, exaggerating himself sometimes, making another nehushta. So we is to make idol all the time. Nehushtan. This is a problem. This is really happened in history. For instance, if you go to like uh, you know uh, Israel, and uh, you see many, uh, I think uh, uh, there are memory, and then uh, you know they make so many uh, monuments like that. They just honoring, respecting, or respecting that. When you go also to uh, Italy, yeah, Italy, and there is a spot uh, who died, you know, Saint Paul. Paul died there. Tres Pontes. Tres means three. Pontes means like, uh, 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 you know, the well, small well. So when this is like a tradition story. So uh, when uh, when the Paul martyred at the time, he was a uh, he's a. Uh, uh, you know, neck was uh, just uh, you know cut it out, and the, the neck was uh, dropped off on the uh, soil, and then and you know uh, jump the uh, jump of the land three times, one, two, three. It is a tradition or just a mystery story. So people are believing, and then still war is there, well is there, and what are they doing? The uh, uh, tourists they go and they just uh, you know throw the uh, coins like that yeah, because uh, it was a miraculous uh, place so it will happen to me they just admiring, worshipping St. Paul you know, is that really St. Paul wanted uh, for us? It's the same thing the Hushtan, everywhere when you go some place people are just uh, admiring place, admiring some other thing they don't really recognize that the essence the reality is Jesus Christ. The lifted one who is Jesus Christ. Gospel. The center of gospel is Jesus Christ who died for us, lifted up on high, just taking away all your sins away. This is the gospel really teaching to us, you know. That's why we have to really focus on that. But many people focusing other stuff, church history. And then what is our historic church? And then what is a you know, good thing about it? So if you look at, uh, I, we really uh, prioritize and the Holy Trinity and uh, the Holy Scripture, you know, first. So many people are recognizing other stuff. When you go to church, just uh, looking at others or looking at other circumstances, uh, you know, that is not essence. You have to remember even though we are experiencing miraculous things in your life, and when you go to church and healing or whatever, and uh, 
lots of, uh, I think, uh, miraculous thing happening in your life. And you have to remember what's the most important thing. Jesus deliverance, salvation. So we call the Bible uh, as a canon. We call it canon. Uh, but some liberal theology and only book of books, like uh, uh, they call it. Canon is like kane. Uh, kane uh, is like a read, uh, which is a uh, scale for everything. So uh, today we have a scale, but in all, uh, in all the times, a uh, long time ago, they have only read. Uh, read, and then they just uh, scale everything. So kane, canon is a, a meaning, uh, it's a standard. So what is the standard for your perspective? What is the standard of, of your point of view? Like when you look at the, you know, what is right, what is wrong, how do you evaluate? How do you judge? So everything should be judged according to the teaching of the Bible. This is so important. So that's why we should prioritize the Bible's authority and God the Father and the uh, Jesus, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You know, always we should focus on that. You know, Hezekiah, Reformation is really like that. Only focusing on what God did, what did God really do for us. And they remember, Nehushtan is not right. And if you look at the, the text talking about so many, look at there, how can it, it is it possible? You know, high places and the pillars and the Eshera. Eshera is like an uh, idol. You know, how can, you know, how can be, you know, it, is it possible to exist over there? So, we believe uh, God the Father, we just confess Jesus Christ. However, our life, sometimes we have so many idols in your lives, you know, even though we don't think like that. When you read uh, uh, the life of uh, Jacob and uh, uh, in Genesis chapter 28, he was uh, just a flee from the, his uh, brother. He, he was uh, running away at the time. And then he experienced Bethel, you know, as you know, Bethel. Bethel is uh, like a place uh, Jacob met God. There was no one. It was a scary night, you know, when you go uh, just crossing over or just going walking yourself in the night. It is uh, so scary and, uh, uh, you know, fearful. But when he was uh, sleeping at the time, he just experienced the presence of God. And then he called that place as Bethel. Bethel means uh, Bet House El, uh, God, the house of God. So he was uh, so, he felt so good. But however, the times passed by, he just uh, got uh, so many idols and so many uh, their family, his own family, just worshipped other stuff. So he just uh, changed, reforming uh, his life again. Uh, Genesis, uh, looking at Genesis 35, 1 through 3, talking about he's uh, just reforming his life again. Uh, that place, he called it El Bedel, you know, the, the house of God uh, and uh, the God. Uh, the house of God, like that. So he just uh, reconfirming, reforming again. All right. When I met God first time, it was good. I was uh, scared at the time, but God just uh, with me and uh, just uh, made me success in our lives. So I'm thanking, th- uh, thanking so much for His uh, grace. And then let's go back. All our family, not by him, not by Himself. So He just uh, ask all family, you know. Uh, if you look at Genesis 35 and 1, 3, God said to Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there. And then, you know, let's go together and change it. All his household, all who were with him, put away foreign gods. Even though he he didn't have a other god, but, you know, relative household, you know, they might have a different idols. This, this is a reformation. So reformation should be happened in our lives, in our family first. This is so important. So then, what are the uh, idols in your life? Uh, Bible is clearly talking about First John two fifteen seventeen. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desire, desire of the flesh and desires 
of the eyes and the pride in possession is not from the Father, but is from the world. You know, what does it say? Really talking about so many, we have desires for worldly stuff. Yeah, we need the money. We need a position. We need the worldly uh, things. We need that. But you have to remember what is the goal, what is the purpose to attain them, you know. Bible, Bible is clearly talking about desire of the flesh, desires of the eyes, and the pride in possession. It's not from the Father. So only we seek uh, first His kingdom and His righteousness. Why we need the money? Why need the, do we need the, all you know, the belongings in this world? Because the, the you know, advance the kingdom of God. We need more money to do the will of God. We need uh, health because we, uh, you know, to build the kingdom of God. We need uh, uh, talents, you know, to, in order to build up His kingdom. Where this kind of, uh, uh, you know, purpose and motivation should uh, we have? But however, most of the people they have desires for worldly things, worldly stuff. This is not right. This is not from the from the Father, you know. So the world is passing away. Remember, this world will pass away. And everything is passing away. I'm not sure uh, these days, uh, you know, it's going to almost the end of this world. You know, already we know that Bible is talking about this is the last days all the time. But especially, really, we feel uh, these days are last days. Uh, even though maybe uh, uh, end of this year, maybe Jesus... Uh, you know, second coming happen. You know, we, we just uh, we should uh, just uh, accept it. You should buy. It. You should acknowledge it. You know, so those kind of thing. So many disasters happening in everywhere, and the earthquake and the flooding, and uh, China and then COVID nineteen and uh, so many stuff is happening. Uh, disaster uh, world is going on. Uh, so this is our uh, experience. So what should we do? So we should stand right and uh, we should uh, get rid of all your idols or idolatrous things in your life. We have to go back to God. We have to stand before God. We have to just uh, follow as a scale and standard as the Bible's teaching. That's why we have to read the Bible every day. So always you, we should... Uh, 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 look back and uh, try to dump all your trashes, garbage, you know, uh, garbage, all things, you know. Uh, I just remind that uh, Paul's teaching and, uh, uh, you know, uh, Philippians 3.8, you know, uh, chapter 3 is uh, talking about, uh, really Paul is uh, talking about everything except the knowledge of Christ. I just uh, uh, consider as a rubbish, garbage, Dumb, you know, dumb. It's garbage. So, except the knowing of the knowledge of Christ, the knowledge of Christ. So, do you have the same like attitude or point of view? Are you really trying to get grasp of the knowledge of Christ? Knowledge of God is a pre pre art to all things in your life. This is so important, you know. So that's why we like so much the Bible and the the living Bible. When you read it. Uh, it looks like dead and all the, you know, ancient language is coming up, come alive into our life, you know. So, so I think, uh, uh, amazing. So last point, I want to just uh, uh, challenge you, uh, last point. We should mirror. You should take a look yourself. Always, you should see yourself uh, in the light of uh, the teaching of the Bible, always. So I challenge you uh, every day, personally, we should have a private devotional life. And also we should have a family altar. May we just uh, got, uh, be together and have worship together. This is so important. Yeah, if we, we are possible, maybe we go to early uh, prayer meeting at church. That's good. But if you cannot do it, just uh, your family, family altar, reading Bible and then just uh, sharing afterwards, pray together. This is uh, really important, you know. We should uh, try to stand 
uh, yourself and your family all the time try to stand in the light of the fiber so we call it quiet time you should have a, a, a little remote place and have a, a certain amount of time and quiet time to have a, a dialogue and uh, really uh, talk with God, you know, working with God. So some people like the quiet day or whatever. So just a moment by moment, day by day, whatever. We should try to walk with God always. This is a, we need a, a, this kind of fellowship with God. So this is, I think, a, uh, crucial uh, to the Christian life. Many people, without doing this, like uh, just uh, attending church and uh, leaders, or just uh, worshiping and together participating in the worship, and then uh, they are thinking this all. But I am suggesting further than that, you should go further, more than that. We always, every day, you should meet God personally. This is uh, so significant and important. Just uh, we wash body every day. You wash it just in the morning, uh, in the night. But same thing, we should just cleanse us, you clean yourself in, you know, in the uh, light of the Word of God. Do I live well or right in the uh, light of the Word of God? Like that, you always mirror yourself in the light of the Word of God. Repentance, we call it repentance. When you, de- you did uh, something wrong, you have to repent. You have to change your life. Remove, remove, um, removing. Uh, you should uh, remove your all idols in your heart. Any desires for, you know, uh, graving for some worldly stuff. Just take them away. So you should clean your heart and mind. Always be, should be clean. Your heart, your thinking, your perspective, your just... Uh, uh, motivation, your intent, all everything should be clean, so that maybe you bear the uh, fruits and the holy and clean life like them. So these steps, steps are needed in daily lives in order to be uh, clean your hearts and mind. So thus I emphasize so much personal devotional life and uh, so kneeling life, you know, uh, kneeling down uh, before God every day. So we need, we need to read the Bible every day. We need to have a, a right focus every day. We should have focus. Where are you looking at? What is your uh, really standard, you know? So we should have the right direction. So every day we should get a God's uh, direction. So what should I do, Lord? If you just pray to God early in the morning, He's telling you what to do. So I'm just asking, Lord, what should I do? Lord, what should uh, we do our church? Lord, how can we do something? Lord, just uh, we just pray to God. He's uh, leading us, you know. And then also, when you read it spiritually, He's telling me what to do. Holy Spirit, Jesus really told us, Holy Spirit uh, dwells in you. He will let you uh, know what to say, you know. So He really just uh, helping uh, in uh, everyday uh, life. You know, this is so important. So I want to just close with uh, Psalm uh, 1. It's a beautiful Psalm, you know. This is not, uh, I think I want to in- indicate or point out only one thing. Many people are just thinking about Psalm 1. It's so beautiful. Let's, yeah, in here, text is here. And uh, many people are just thinking, oh, I am, the, I am the blessed man. Many people, they are thinking. But I don't think so. Uh, even though you go to church, you, are, you became a, a member of a church, or you are ordained a layman, or a elder, or pastor, uh, whatever your position, you are just uh, uh, granted uh, from God, you, you are not a uh, blessed man yet. So the Bible clearly talking about in here, uh, it's a beautiful uh, psalm in Hebrew, uh, Ashere Ha'ish, yeah, in Hebrew, Ashere. Bless is the man. Yeah. As you know, in English, the means it's a specific, the only one person talking about specific man. But in Korean, uh, it just uh, dropped uh, out. That's why we just, uh, uh, in Korean, yeah, 복 있는 사람. But what I'm just uh, suggesting in right translation, 복 있는, 
Who said that? The man, the man I'm talking about. So I am just asking you, are you the man the Bible is talking about? This is not talking about a general person or just attending church. This is not kind of those person. Blessed is the, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, he meditates in day and night. This kind of person is really the blessed, the man who really uh, is blessed. This is so important. Your delight. Are you really happy with it? When, when are you happy? Yeah, when you're doing your work, your business uh, every day, yeah, you should be happy. You just, uh, uh, if you're a student, maybe if you study, or memorize or get a good grade and you're happy. Right, that's good. That's, uh, uh, that gives uh, you delightful list. Yeah, that's good. But the man, Bible talking about blessed, you know, the man who is blessed, this kind of person really uh, delights. His delight is in, you know. So where are, where you delight in? Where are you in? So my delight in the, the love of the Lord. So meditate from early in the morning yeah, until night. Every day, just meditating. So you have to believe. Uh, the you know, Gospel of John talking about uh, the Logos, Logos, the Word, yeah, you know, uh, Word itself, Word is uh, Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ is not like a uh, just the superficial. He exists in our lives, you know. So in or with the word of God, so He exists uh, in our real life in the word of God, you know. So you delight. You always should have a delight uh, with the, the word of God, and this is a blessed man. Yeah, the Bible really talking about. We should be this kind of person, the blessed man. So when you have uh, this kind of uh, attitude and uh, passion, so you will not just uh, following counsel and uh, thinking of a wicked and then or sinner's way. Uh, you don't want to live like a sinner's way. And then you don't want to, like uh, scoffers, you know, deriding other people. You don't want to be with them. You always, God is giving you and the fruit, bearing to, enable to bear ring fruit. And then I like the uh, last verse so much. For the Lord knows uh, the Adonai, your de'a, the way of uh, righteousness. What does it mean? God really, uh, you know, allow your way. God knows you. God knows your way. This is a sig- significant, you know, Bible's teaching. And really, I like this verse so much. Are you the one who really God uh, knows God is recognizing you. This is uh, important. Many people, they, they are just thinking, and okay, oh, I'm acknowledged by uh, someone, I'm happy. If you acknowledge by other people, it's uh, happy, uh, in you know, best thing in this world. But however, the, the most important thing is God should really acknowledge, should acknowledge you. Uh, so this kind of demand, will be acknowledged by you. So God knows you. God will take care of you. God will lead you. God is just a guide you every day. Don't worry about it. You walk, walk with uh, God every day. Emmanuel. God is with, with us. Emmanuel. God is with me always. How beautiful. How wonderful. Are you living this kind of life? Are you still just uh, worshipping Nehushtan, idols, and uh, worldly stuff? and seeking for all those kind of desires like that, I want to challenge you. So we should go back to the Word of God and uh, uh, always the church really, uh, Ecclesia Reformata, Semper Reformanda Est. The church reformed, always uh, is reforming. You should re- you know, reform yourself. Always we should go back to the Word of God. We always just uh, try to live according to the word of God. This is, uh, I think, a primary, uh, you know, 
most uh, important thing in your life every day. Why do we have, do we have to read the Bible? Why do we have to understand, have a quiet time in order to make a right direction? You know, adjust our focus. What what really uh, you know uh, does uh, God want you to have uh, your life every day? So He just uh, asking you the right way. I want to conclude with that uh, in the in the Bible, you know, Hezekiah Reformation, Second King eighteen, is talking about verse three, and he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. How beautiful uh, this, uh, uh, you know, uh, this verse. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. This uh, this is life should be in our uh, happen in our lives. You always do. Uh, right in the eyes of the Lord, then God will acknowledge you. God knows you. He will take uh, uh, everything and uh, He accepts you. And uh, when He uh, sit or stand before God in the last days, He will just uh, accept us. So He He will He credit uh, our lives. So this is uh, so we should do what is right in the eyes of the Lord always. So. Let's uh, reform everything. What you have do, uh, doing wrong, wrong things, and uh, take them away. Garbage, throw, throw them away. Just uh, get rid of them over your life, and then just uh, make it clean. Always try to live, you know, accordance with uh, the uh, teaching of the Bible. Amen.